Can you guys hear me? Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, do a brief talk on Wi-Fi 6 e antenna design and some of the things that I've noted or came up with that was uh, different that you need to take into account with uh, Wi-Fi 6 e antennas and the new frequency band. So we'll talk a little bit about spec definition design and give a design example and then some test results. <clears throat> so for us, what is our design process as far as when we're going to design an antenna and now we're going to go and use the 6E band, right? So we, you want to select your antenna type. What type of antenna do you want to design for? Well, what, that's your basic building block. Your operation frequency, which is going to be tri-band design now. Uh, typically, we've done dual band in the past, so now we're going to do a tri-band, including the six to seven gigahertz frequency band. What polarization are you going to use? Vertical, horizontal, um, dual band, slant 45, or circular. In this case, a dual band, dual, dual polarization, both vertical and horizontal. Pattern, omnidirectional or directional. What type of antenna, right? And then the beam width, is it going to be narrow or uh, narrow beam width or wide beam width? Typically, narrow beam widths are more for high density. Wide beam width gives you more coverage. Then antenna size and feed network dictated by the gains, the beam width, side lobe levels, and the front to back ratio, specifically for directional antennas. Those are very important, specifically for high density, large public venues, those types of things. And then antenna synthesis. So for antenna synthesis, um, what type of numerical analysis software are you going to use when you're designing your antenna and what you have to take into account um, when you're putting all of those together to come up with that type of design that you're looking for? So we use a high frequency structure simulator, uh, HFSS, to do all of our simulations, right? So um, when we're doing that, what you want to do is you want to select your simulation parameters. What parameters do you want to uh, simulate? What, what are the important parameters when you're trying to come up with this design? And then you want to enter, you want to start with a single radiator. Even, even though it's a multi-port antenna, you want to design for that single radiator. And once you optimize that radiator, then you add the additional ones. And then from that, you take that, and then you optimize that for the full solution. And then the more important part is the feed network. What is the feed network to feed these antennas? And you want to optimize that over frequency as well. Then you want to simulate and simulate complete antenna and optimize including cables. Now this is one of the most important parts that I found out about the new 6, the 6E from 6 to 7 gigahertz is the cable. When we do our designs and we come up with a final spec, we design our antenna such that at the connector of the cable is where the gain is. So we include the cable into the design. So you have to know the specifics about the cable design. Then we run our sensitivity analysis, generate our assembly of drawings, then we build it, and then we test it. So, Right here, I'm showing uh, two different sets of cables where we, uh, we wanted to test them to see what the losses were of those cables. So our standard cable length on, on our antennas are three feet. So we, did a, we took about 10, we made 10 cables of uh, three feet length for RG58, which is your typical cable that's used on, um, on antennas. And then we looked at LMR100, which is more of a low loss cable. And as you can see from the RG58, um, you can see as the frequency gets higher, the loss gets more. But on LMR, since it's a low loss cable, it's pretty much contained across the frequency band of operation. But the reason why that we did this was because in all of the literature and anything you find on these cables, they're only rated up to six gigahertz. So we wanted to see what was the interaction at the higher frequency band, so we wanted to go in and test them ourselves, and then we could come up with a table that we could use when we start assimilating the antenna. <clears throat> so, I'll give you a design example. <clears throat> so, not all barbecues are the same, right? So as you can see here, 
I'm, I'm, I'm from Texas, so I'm partial to brisket. So I'm, I'm one of those brisket guys, love brisket. But as you can see, we have different styles of barbecue here, right? You got Kansas, Kansas City, St. Louis, Memphis, and all of them have the same, what I would say, building blocks, which is the meat, but they do something different to make it distinctive to where they're from or what they're known for based on barbecue. That's kind of similar to antennas, right? Your antenna design, you have a basic building block. For us, our building block is a dipole antenna. Now, what do I do to make that um, customized to the way that we do things, my process, right, our process. So we, we'll take a dipole antenna, so we'll stack them. So we stack the dipoles. What does stacking do? That makes the antenna be able to be broadbanded. We do interleaving. What does interleaving do? By interleaving the antennas in the design, we can make it a smaller package, right? So these are the types of things that we do. We fold the dipole instead of a straight standard dipole size, we do a folded dipole design, which also makes it smaller. So all of those types of things are what we would say is our secret sauce to get our design the way that we want it. Just like with these different types of barbecues, they do different things to call it where they're from and call it their own. So here's a design example. Um, this is our femto patch, right? This is our antennas, 3.4 by 3.4 inches. Very small, compact uh, design. <clears throat> so, like I said, we, we, we're strong on doing dipole design. So we started out with a dual, pan, dual band dipole and then um, <clears throat> dual polarized, optimized in HFS for return loss, isolation, and antenna pattern to keep the efficiency as high as possible and then a single PCB radiator, a single PCB design for manufacturability. And then what we did as far as the gain reduction, so I took those losses that we calculated and we input it into the design. And as you can see here, the losses across the frequency bands for two and five gigahertz. And then we just optimized it. And then we also looked at the losses across uh, FR4, uh, FR4 uh, board, because we used FR4. And we take all of that and then we go and go through and design, come up with an optimized solution. And <clears throat> as you can see on the uh, left, that is the actual uh, antenna that was designed in HFF HFSS. And then you see the patterns. Um, the top patterns on the left is the simulated pattern and then on the right is the actual test pattern in a test facility, an anechoic chamber. And as you can see, the beam widths are pretty much the same for what we, what we simulated to what we measured. Um, as you can see on the back end, um, you see more interaction with the cable when you go in and actually do the chamber testing. So you can see the designs are pretty close. So now we wanna add six gig, the six gigahertz band, right? So we go through the same things, but now we add in the losses at six gig from six to seven gig and go through the same design process. But now you also, though you have the six to seven gig, you take that and you incorporate that into the design. So you're playing with everything together and trying to optimize to get the, the solution across the entire band. So, cause you want everything to um, work, um, work together. And if you look at the designs here um, in the six gigahertz band, you see the patterns um, are somewhat the same as far as the um, elevation and the azimuth, but you see the interaction on the, with the cables. So with the cables and testing, you see more interaction of the radiation onto the cables and it shapes the antenna patterns. In the seven gigahertz, you see that there's a little mismatch in the pattern. So what that tells me is that with this design, when I add a six gig in the packet size that I had, I will have to go back and reiterate and recalculate and make that uh, design package larger to get all of the uh, frequencies to play together more, to get more of a consistent pattern over the second seven gig, six to seven gigahertz band. <clears throat> so then what you wanna do also is you wanna measure um, your visoir which tells you how the antenna resonates. As you can see, um, we set a, a visoire of two to one, which is your standard for um, 
low power for these types of antenna designs. And that means that 90% of the power is going to the antenna and 10% of the power is being reflected. And then you also look at the isolation. The isolation tells about the crosstalk between each ports on the antenna. And that's it.